So uh, welcome to the second video on the topic of application of isotopes from the uh, uh, 12th lecture of the sixth week. And now we're going to discuss what is radioactive tracers or chasers and how we can use them to measure uh, different, uh, different activities in the body. Uh, how can we measure the volume of bodily compartments also using radioactive isotopes? And a very common method for, uh, for imaging on tomography Camera, gamma camera and single photon emission computer tomography. Let's get to it. And now we have, uh, how can we use this little guy here? Animal testing is not going to be my subject here. But how can we use this guy to measure different protein interactions within its body? Let's just say, and this is very important to know, that I can take a radioactive isotope. Let's take tritium, which is hydrogen 3 which is one proton and two neutrons, and I can couple it, I can couple it with, uh, with a uh, biologically relevant molecule, let's say leucine, and what I'm saying biologically relevant molecule is just a molecule that I know what is going to do. It is going to course through this little dude's veins, and it's going to get to the pancreas where it's going to be absorbed and secreted. So this is what essentially I expect it to do. And when I couple a radioactive isotope with a relevant uh, with a biologically relevant molecule, I am forming a radio, radio pharmacon. Radio pharmacon. Perfect. And this is important to know, the radio pharmacon, because we'll be using this often. So what would happen is that this, by the way, is called the tracer. The tracer. And why is that? Because I can, I can trace the radioactive decay coming off of this tritium, this uh, hydrogen um, isotope. So let's just say I have the pancreas of this poor guy here and the leucine is just slowly going to be absorbed in the pancreas, slowly going to be absorbed in the pancreas and then it may, may be secreted. And we can shoot a chaser afterwards. A chaser is just this leucine without the radioactive, the radioactive coupling. And basically it's just going to go through the same, through the same route. And essentially what we do is we can just take a point in time, dissect the pancreas, make thin layers out of it, and we can actually see, we can actually look at a layer, we can look at a layer and see where the, where my radiopharmacon went and how it was secreted and I can just, uh, I can just follow its radioactive uh, emission and I can actually get a nice image as to how this protein was secreted. This is called a functional image, functional, functional image because I get an idea as to how something is working properly in the body. I'm not taking a picture, I'm only getting this thing. I'm only getting this emission here and it's a good thing to have. And we're going to keep on going and talk a little bit about how we can measure the volume of bodily compartments. And uh, this picture is brought to us by the RAMS Therapy Center. And basically, this whole thing means I can, I can use a radiopharmacon again, radiopharmacon, which is, again, basically some sort of, of uh, radioactive, radioactive isotope coupled with a biologically biologically relevant molecule, biologically relevant molecule. And the important thing is I know what molecule I'm using because I can specifically target these molecules that I know would be diffused throughout the blood if I want to measure the blood volume. So I can measure the, uh, the blood volume, the blood volume, or I can measure specific functional intakes. Let's say I can measure the intake of of iron or calcium or even iodide in the thyroid gland. So I can really measure some very functional things. I can see them diffuse and as they diffuse, let's just say they diffuse throughout the body, they're going to emit uh, radiation which I can detect. And this radiation is going to clue me in as to how these processes are taking place in the body or how uh, how evenly it fuses throughout and what is the volume of the compartment I'm looking at. This is just a way to use, this is just, uh, really all of this is just examples of using radioactive isotopes for measurements. 
And be that I'm using the human body, being that I'm not using a guinea pig, it is very important, and you'll hear me often say, that we want to use isotopes that have a short half-life. Short, not a short, a short half-life. We already discussed half-life. It's, uh, it's the time by which it takes the isotope to be degraded to half of its amount. And why do I want short half-life? Because if I'm using, if I'm using radioactive materials for, uh, for imaging, I really don't want this little dude to be walking around radiating gamma rays for weeks on end. We'd like to get it done quickly if possible. So this is why we're going to use short half-life isotopes. And the last thing we'd want to talk about is the gamma camera. And this is really uh, well represented in questions. This is a classic, classic imaging uh, method to ask about. And it is pretty simple. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the knowledge we have about photomultiplier tubes. And if you don't remember what a photomultiplier tube is, I would defer you to the video discussing, um, discussing the photomultiplier tube at the end of it. Uh, detection of radiation, I believe it is called. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to use a radiopharmacon again. Radiopharmacon. And we already know that the radiopharmacon is a radioactive isotope coupled with a biologically relevant molecule. And that molecule, I know what it is going to do. And let's just say I'm, I'm using, and this is very often, often used in uh, in gamma camera. It's the technetium 99 and it's a good name to remember in case they ask you well, tell us how the gamma camera works and give us an example of an isotope used. And the technetium 99 is basically a gamma emitting, gamma emitting isotope. Gamma emitting isotope. That means that I'm going to detect gamma radiation somehow using the gamma camera. And this makes sense. So let's just say I couple it with some sort of, of biological molecule that I know that I know uh, I want to I want to look into the functionality of uh, an organ or a sub subdivision in the brain for some reason because this is this is the example here it's emitting from the dude's brain here for some reason not sure why so I coupled this technetium with a relevant biological molecule I got a radio pharmacon and this radiopharmacon was injected to this person's veins and it's slowly making its way to where it is naturally belong. If this biological molecule is absorbed in the brain and is going to slowly make its way, it's going to get absorbed in the brain and it's going to settle there and emit gamma radiation in all directions. It's going to emit gamma radiation in all directions, in every direction. Now what we really want to do is we want to measure that gamma radiation. So basically you can imagine that this, this is just vectors for the gamma radiation to go. It can go everywhere. And the first, the first uh, part that it interacts with in the gamma camera, and this is the, entire, this is the entire gamma camera, the first thing it interacts with is called, these rods are called the collimator or the collimator rods. And these are basically lead rods that are going to absorb, that are going to absorb the gamma photon. And you're wondering, well, if I want to get imaging, why do I want to absorb the photon? And the answer is simple. This is due, and the collimator is responsible for, and this is important to understand, lateral, later, lateral resolution. And how does that take place? How does the collimator help us achieve lateral resolution? Well, think of it this way. If I can have photons going into these photomultiplier tubes, and they're going in every direction, they can, all of these photomultiplier tubes are going to get a reading. They're all going to be reading different photons. But that's not what I want. I want to read the photons. I want to get a reading right in front of the radiation source. So what I can do is I can put out a collimator that is going to absorb photons with a specific angle. So it's not going to let specific angles through. It's only going to let, to let the angles that are right in front, right in front of the radiation source through. And if, uh, if a gamma photon is actually able to sift through the collimator, it sifts through the collimator, here at this point, via the crystal, it is turned into a flash. And you can see that that flash is going pretty much every which way. 
is going every which way, whereas it is more focused, it has more energy closer to that point. Let me make that a little bit more clear. If I have this point, this, this point here, is this point here, it's the surface of the photon. Let's just say the photon was absorbed here and it turned into a flash. And you can see that the further away I am, the less reading I'm going to have. And I'm going to have more reading. I'm going to have more reading here, closer to this incident point. I'm going to have less reading outside. So event eventually, this, this uh, photomultiplier tube, this photomultiplier tube here, that is right in front of the radiation source, is going to read the most current, just like this guy here. It's going to read the most current. This is also going to read a little bit current. This is going to read a little bit. This is going to be, read just a little bit, just a tad bit. This here as well, just maybe just a trace here. And basically, as you can see, I can get an, an image like so that shows me, hey, check this out. At this point, the radiation uh, or the reading, the current reading for the photomultiplier tube is the strongest, and as you go out, it gets weaker. So I can assume that whatever was facing this specific uh, orientation was the radiation source. And actually, you can get fair, fairly nice images from it. They don't look like that. They actually look uh, fairly, fairly, fairly nice and fairly detailed. And basically what happens, the gamma photon comes in, turns into a flash. That flash is then um, gone into the photomultiplier tube is transmitted as an electron that is multiplied in the tube and is read on the other end as current. And the collimator obviously is responsible for the lateral resolution. And this was a question that came up. What is responsible for the lateral resolution in a gamma camera? And a lot of people thought, hey, this is the, these guys are responsible. So the more I have of these, the more resolution I have which is also true to an extent, but the answer they're looking for is the collimator is responsible for lateral resolution. Perfect. And all we have left to discuss is SPECT, and it's going to take right around less than a minute, less than a minute, you can time me, SPECT or single photon emission, already lost 20 seconds, computer, computer tomography is basically imagine if I have a person right here in the center I'm looking at him from above looking at him from above from this from this point right here I'm looking at him from above and I realize that I have maybe 20 more seconds this is this is my guy here a spec a spec system would be one gamma camera here one gamma camera here and one gamma camera here and we're done. That's really all it is. It can take a few gamma cameras in a few different directions and, and give me a three-dimensional gamma camera, gamma camera, da da da, image. And what's really important, the last thing I want to say about a, cam, a gamma camera is that a gamma camera, a gamma camera is a functional, functional imaging method. This is important to understand. It's not like an X-ray where it where it shows me what is uh, where it shows me how does something look. An X-ray shows me how something looks. A CT shows me how something looks. Uh, a gamma camera shows me how something works. How something works. Why does it show me how something works? Because I couple a radio pharmacon. I use a radio pharmacon that does a specific a specific, uh, that does a specific role, that has a specific role, it goes to a specific organ, maybe the kidneys, and it settles there, and I can see how the kidneys filter the blood, or maybe it goes to the brain and it settles there. It doesn't give me a whole image of the entire body, just about how some specific processes work with respect to the type of molecule I chose to inject. Hopefully you found this helpful. See you in the next video.